Hey, good afternoon. I am Marla Tate. I'm Elizabeth Langston. Um, our presentation today is going to be on the vaccines, the unit recombinant polysaccharide and conjugate vaccines. So we will be presenting the introduction of the vaccine, subunit vaccines, recombinant vaccine, polysaccharide vaccine, conjugate vaccine, and we will share the references and ask questions. So to begin, as you all know, vaccines are a powerful public health tool that saves two to three million lives each year around the world. Um, <clears throat> vaccines use weakened or dead forms of a virus or bacteria as antigens, which generate antibodies, which are the key ingredients that stimulate the immune response. Increased understanding of the immune system over the past century has led to the development of several different types of vaccines, each with their own production process. And we will discuss the four types which are again subunit, recombinant, polysaccharide, and conjugate vaccines. And now I'm going to send it over to Elizabeth. Thank you. So subunit vaccines, they're unique unique because they only use a portion of the originating disease causing bacteria, parasite, or virus. These antigens are highly purified proteins or synthetic peptides that are specific, significantly safer than whole pathogen vaccines and approaches. So once it's injected, typically people do not get sick. They might have some like symptoms, side effects, but not like sick. Um, and so this is more suitable for children, elderly, and immunocompromised individuals, as we said before. Um, and the way subunit vaccines work is subunit vaccines, only the antigenic portion of the pathogen are isolated within the lab. That component is used in order to stimulate the immune system. Adjuvants are added to that component in order to create a stronger, more protective immune response since with that small portion of the antigen, um, it's not strong enough, enough or will suffice in an adequate long-term immunity. And once the vaccine is administered, the immune response creates a memory of the antigen in order to combat future infections. And the very first subunit vaccine that was approved in the US was the hepatitis B, B vaccine, and it came from the hepatitis B virus. And then we'll move on to recombinant vaccines. And recombinant vaccines are produced from bacteria, yeast, mammalian, and insect cells. This type of vaccine requires the insertion and transference of DNA sections responsible for encoding the antigen. Examples that are used every day are shingles vaccines and like most common, well, not commonly, but new is the Novavax vaccine that we spoke about earlier today for COVID-19. And the methodology of recombinant vaccine, it's five steps. It's first isolated the genetic material, cutting the gene at the locations of recognition, then using polymerase chain reaction to increase the gene copies, ligation of the DNA molecules, and then the recombinant DNA is inserted in the host. Oh. So once the vaccine is created in the lab, it's via injection released into the body the vaccine is then engulfed by the antigen presenting cell and displayed on the surface of the antigen. 
And the immune response is then triggered by helper T cells to identify the antigen and then will combat future exposures as well. And so now I will pass this on to Marla for the polysaccharide vaccine. Okay, so polysaccharide vaccines, um, they are composed of long chains of sugar molecules that resemble the surface of certain types of bacteria. Basically, um, this sugar <laughs> that is on the chain attracts <clears throat> the um, bacteria and the antigen that um, also then attract B cells that memorize the antigen for future exposure. So this type of vaccine builds immunity by exposing the immune system to the sugar coat, which stimulates and attracts B cells, recognizing that the antigen will build these memory cells for future recognition. And they're commonly used for um, flu type viruses, such as the Haemophilus influenzae type B or Streptococcus pneumonia. Okay, so there are seven steps in building this polysaccharide vaccine. And the first step is to produce these vaccines on a large scale. Basically, it is mass produced. This is done by starting with seed pieces of the polysaccharide bacteria capsule and fermenting it in a large vessel. The third step is to purify and remove the unwanted debris and then freeze it so it remains stable. The fourth step is to is for the protein car carriers to be produced. Each polysaccharide gets its own unique protein that helps it to be recognized by the immune system. Thanks. So the new polysaccharides are then unfrozen and now they are conjugated. And an and adjuvant is added and the adjuvant that I've heard in many of your presentations are um, substances that help stimulate the immune system. In the end, these um, vaccines are not used right away. It takes about three years before they're used. And this is because they want to make sure that these vaccines are safe and effective. So now I move on to the conjugated vaccine. This is uh, basically an add-on to the already polysaccharide vaccine. It is mainly used for vulnerable populations like children and elderly. And I will now go to the children next. So infants and small children, including elderly who have undeveloped immune systems are vulnerable to infections caused by encapsulated bacteria. So what this particular vaccine does, it just stimulates the immune system, gives them somewhat like a boost because regular polysaccharide vaccine just does not work as well alone, that is. So um, for this reason, scientists use a technique known as protein conjugation. And it is, like I mentioned before, used in flu vaccines, and that is chemically bind, bound to polysaccharide, and it helps build memory cells for future exposure. 